The Dealors, the Book of Greek Myths. The Dealors are a husband-wife team that do all the pictures and all the writing. And it's a true nonfiction book as well as a storybook. They have a table of contents with all the chapters. And in the back, there is an index. So afterwards, if you wanted to just read the stories with Zeus in it, you could go find the Z's and find his name. It'll tell you what page number he appears in. We're going to read the first three chapters. In Olden Times, Gaia, Mother Earth, and the Titans. The book starts with a family tree. And as we read, we'll come back and figure out where they are in the family tree of Greek myths. Now, because it says it's a myth, this is before there were a lot of science where we knew how things worked in the world. And they, of course, did not believe in the book of the Bible. The Bible probably hadn't been written much then, and it wouldn't have been taken out much past the Jewish people of Israel. So this is myth, meaning it's not real, it's not pretend. Though people have written stories and said, if this was really true, this is how the world would work. And they sound pretty silly now. This is pictures of Pan, the half man, half goat. In olden times, when men still worshipped ugly idols, there lived in the land of Greece a folk of shepherds and herdsmen who cherished light and beauty. They did not worship dark idols like their neighbors, but created instead their own beautiful, radiant gods. The Greek gods looked much like people and acted like them too, only they were taller, handsomer, and could do no wrong. Fire-breathing monsters and beasts with many heads stood for all that was dark and wicked. They were for gods and great heroes to conquer. The gods lived on top of Olympus, a mountain so high and steep that no man could climb it and see them in their shining palace. But they often descended to earth, sometimes in their own shape, sometimes disguised as human or animals. Mortals worshipped the gods, and the gods honored Mother Earth. They had all sprung from her, for she was the beginning of all life. Gaia, the earth, came out of darkness so long ago that nobody knows when or how. Earth was young and lonesome, for nothing lived on her yet. Above her rose Uranus, the sky dark and blue, set all over with sparkling stars. He was magnificent to behold, and young earth looked up at him and fell in love with him. Sky smiled down on earth, twinkling with his countless stars, and they joined in love. Soon young earth became mother earth, the mother of all things living. All her children loved their warm and bountiful mother and feared their mighty father, Uranus, Lord of the Universe. So Uranus then becomes the names of one of our planets. Most of our planets are named after Greek gods. Rome took up many of the gods and then changed their names. Zeus becomes Jupiter things like that. The Titans. The Titans were the first children of Mother Earth. They were the first gods. Taller than the mountains she created to serve them as thrones, and both Earth and Sky were proud of them. There were six Titans, six glorious gods, and they had six sisters, the Titanesses, whom they took for their wives. When Gaia again gave birth, Uranus was not proud. The new children were also huge, but each had only one glowing eye set in the middle of the forehead. They were the three Cyclopses, and they were named Lightning, Thunder, and Thunderbolt. 
They were not handsome gods, but tremendously strong smiths. Sparks from their heavenly heavy hammers flashed across the sky and lit up the heavens so bright that even their father's star faded. After a while, Mother Earth bore three more sons. Uranus looked at them with disgust. Each of them had fifty heads and a hundred strong arms. He hated to see such ugly creatures walk about on lovely Earth. So he seized them and their brothers, the Cyclopses, and flung them in to Tartarus, the deepest dark pit under the earth. Mother Earth loved her children and could not forgive her husband for his cruelty to them. One of the hardest flint she fashioned, out of the hardest flint she fashioned a sickle and spoke to her son, the Titans. Take this weapon and make an end to your father's cruelty and set your brothers free. Fear took hold of five of the Titans and they trembled and refused. Only Cronus, the youngest but the strongest, dared to take the sickle. He fell upon his father. Uranus could not withstand the weapon wielded by his strong son, and he fled, giving up his powers. Mother Earth made Pontus the bountiless sea, her second husband, and from this union sprang the gods of the watery depths, and from her rich ground grew an abundance of trees and flowers, and out of her crevices, sprites, beasts, and early man crept forth. Cronus was now the lord of the universe. He sat on the highest mountain and ruled over heaven and earth with a firm hand. The other gods obeyed his will and early man worshipped him. This was man's golden age. Men lived happily and in peace with the gods and each other. They did not kill and they had no locks on the door, for theft had not yet been invented. But Cronus did not set his monstrous brothers free, and Mother Earth was angry and plotted his downfall. She had to wait, for no god yet born was strong enough to oppose him, but she knew that one of her sons would be stronger than he, just as Cronus had been stronger than his father. Cronus knew it too, so every time his titanous wife, Rhea, gave birth, he took the newborn god and swallowed it. With all of his offspring securely inside of him, he had nothing to fear. But Rhea mourned. Her five sisters, who had married the five other titans, were surrounded by their titan children, while she all alone. When Rhea expected her sixth child, she asked Mother Earth to help her save the child from his father. And that was what Mother Earth had been waiting for. She gave her daughter whispered advice, and Rhea went away smiling. As soon as Rhea had borne her child, the god Zeus, she hid them. Then she wrapped a stone in baby clothes and gave it to her husband to swallow instead of her son. Cronus was fooled and swallowed the stone, and the little god Zeus was spirited away to a secret cave on the island of Crete. Old Cronus never heard the cries of his young son, for Mother Earth sent noisy earth sprites outside the cave. They made such a clatter, beating their shields and their swords, the other sounds were drowned out. So down here is Cronus. And now we have Zeus. That's part of that family tree. The Dear Lord's Book of Greek Myths.